We thank you, Father, for the privilege of being here. We thank you for this morning service, for the praises, for the songs, especially this number that we just sang, how fitting it is. We know that all things work together to our good when we love thee and call according to your purpose. We pray that thy will would be accomplished in this camp. Bless Brother Scott. Give him a safe journey as he travels. Have him arrive here safely. Bless Brother Darnell as he labors here. Be with his companion, Lord. We pray that thou would touch her with healing so she can be back with him. Have thy way in this service today. Bless thy word and we'll praise thee for what's accomplished. For Jesus' sake we ask it all. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. We have one verse of scripture found in Hebrews, the 11th chapter in the 6th verse. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I can understand very clearly why we have this statement and why we must measure up to this truth. For there is no one that could love God unless they had faith in him. There is no one that will submit themselves unto God unless they have faith in him. There is no one that will obey God unless they have faith in him. There is no one that will really praise God with a true praise unless they have faith with him. Therefore, what the writer of the Hebrew letter is teaching us very clearly, that unless we have faith, we cannot be accepted by God. He will not permit us to enjoy his presence. He does not want an unbeliever to come into his midst and let that unbelief make a barrier between them so that he cannot do for that individual what he wants to do. Therefore, it is vitally important that we exercise faith. Now, in the first verse, the Bible tells us what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Very simply, it means that faith is a confidence, an assurance of an expectation when there is no proof. Now, this is very important. I am coming to God in confidence. I am coming to God in assurance that the things that I want, the things that I need, the things that I ask, the things that I'm expecting him to do for me, he will do. Although I don't see every evidence around me at all that it's going to be done. When I went to the altar to be saved, for we are saved by faith, the Bible tells us, and not by works that any man should bear. I went there confessing my sin. I stood condemned before him at the very moment that I said, I am a sinner. At the very moment I said, I have transgressed thy law. At the very moment I admitted that I was living in a way of rebellion against him. I had a right through his justice to be have sentence pronounced upon me of eternal damnation. But it was at that moment that Christ came and interposed his blood in my behalf so that I had forgiveness of God and cleansing from all unrighteousness. I did not merit it. There was nothing about me that I could earn it. I came as a complete pauper to him, helpless, hopeless. There was nothing in me could change the situation. There was nothing about me that could alter the course. I was simply a lost sinner, dead in trespasses and sin, blind to spiritual things. My understanding was darkened. My heart was darkened. I was in the wrong relationship. But by faith, when I diligently sought him, when I searched out for him, when I reached for that something that my heart was hungering after, when I craved for that drink that I could not find any place else, 
even though I was just there in an altar prayer surrounded by men in a church that was built by men my faith went beyond the building it went beyond the people it went beyond the circumstance and it reached up to the throne of God and it got a hold of God and God rewarded me by forgiving me and saving my soul and forgiving me of my sin the Bible said I am cleansed or purified by faith I was born with a carnal nature I exercised that before I exercised anything else like any normal child I probably threw my baby bottle down and shook the crib and squalled and yelled when I didn't have my way that all nature worked before I could speak before I could express myself in words maybe before I could run before I could kick I don't know but it was there I was born with it I was not responsible that it was there I wasn't in the garden when Adam fell but there came a time when I was responsible for keeping it when God had a provided a way for me to get rid of it and have it taken care of and that God had provided something in its place for it so that I could be blessed so by faith again I reached out not knowing how it could be changed not knowing how it could be claimed too many of us have to know all the detail we want to put it down precinct after precinct and word after word but by sheer faith a confidence God you promised that there's a cure for this thing God you have provided a remedy for this for eternity God you have given to me the hope that I need not be the way I am and in that confidence I reached out and I touched the mighty power of God that was able to bring the work to pass in my life the Bible said that after I was saved and purified I had to walk by faith and not by sight the natural man has always walked by sight we go by what we feel we go by what we see we go by what we hear what we can touch what we can handle there had to be a change now I couldn't put this thing into the things that I see and the things that I hear and the things that I could handle too many down through the years have done this and that's why their spiritual life has been the shambles it's always been that way Nicodemus said I can't shrivel up and be a little baby again and be born again of my mother the woman at the well said this well is very deep and are you bigger and greater than Jacob who gave us this well you don't have anything to reach down there and get the water with and give it to me it was all out there where you could see out there where you could feel out there where you could handle out there in sight how many of our people around the church are that way today if somebody could give you some type of electrical shock while you're at the altar you'd scream I've got it I've got it I've got it I felt something tingling up and down my spine but your faith won't reach out without that type of a feeling and that type of an evidence and that's something you can see and that's something you can handle and get a hold of God can you get to the place where in your experience you say if I never shout if I never feel a thing if I never have this happen to me I know that he saves me for his word said that he would and I've come on to him and I believe his word and I've accepted his word and the work is done he rewards me because I have diligently sought him expecting that which I had no evidence of what a glorious picture that we could get to that place I didn't watch the doctor operate by faith I left him did you hear what I said I just committed myself completely over when they gave me that needle in my hip the nurse said in just a little while Reverend you won't care about a thing I thought how in the world can that be but I soon found out I didn't care about a thing they pushed me through the halls didn't mean a thing pushed me in the operating room I saw the big lights up there didn't mean a thing I didn't care about a thing 
Listen, friends, I believe that you and I can have a faith that we can look up to God and say, God, I've so completely surrendered myself to you, turned myself over into your hands that you can just work out every detail for me. I want you to have your way and let your will be done regardless what it costs, for I know in the end you'll bring me through, you'll take me over the hump and give me the victory. The old songwriter put it in words like this. Oh, for a faith that will not shrink, though pressed by every foe, that will not tremble on the brink of any earthly woe. We need that. For this pleases God. And if you'll follow this chapter through of the evidence of this type of faith, Noah never saw a thunderstorm build an ark on dry land. Faith without evidence. They laughed at him. They mocked at him. They did everything. Sarah looked at herself. I'm an old woman. My days of yielding children is past. She laughed within the tent. But God, through faith, had turned back her days to fertility again and brought forth his promise regardless of her age and her physical condition and what she thought about it. Come on, friend. Go down through the line. Moses forsook Egypt by faith. Didn't know where the next penny was coming from. Said goodbye to all the riches of the kingdom. Said goodbye to all the position the kingdom would offer. Said goodbye to everything that he could have inherited. Down there in Egypt to suffer with the people of God rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin that lasted for a season. There was a faith there, a faith that motivated these people, a faith that aided these people and assisted them, a faith that took them into areas that they never could have went if they walked by sight. And a lot of our folks will never get to the place where God's really going to bless them and prove himself to them because you have to have some type of a physical evidence that it's going to take place. You do not trust God enough to reach up and say, God, I can't see your hand, but thank God you can see mine and you can make the connection and take me through. Let God have his eye on every detail of your life. What a blessing that will be. Then you can please God. Listen, if all you are doing, and forgive me for saying that, is praising God through physical emotion, you can do that at a football stadium. You can do that when a parade walks down the street. When it takes any instrument that a man can bring to pass, whether it be a drum, an organ, a piano, a guitar, or anything to cause you to say, praise the Lord, hallelujah, you have really never arrived at the place that you should. Now, when you have the faith, when you have the victory, these other things that God has given us will respond properly and in order to them. But they are never the source of it. It must be God. And your faith in God moves God. What he's trying to say, that when we come to God with a confidence and an assurance, although we do not see the tangible evidence around us, and we say, God, we're expecting you to do it. We didn't come to be turned down. We didn't come to be disappointed. We're expecting you to do it. It moves God. It gets God in action towards us. It gets God to do something for us. Jesus talked about this when he said about the woman that troubled the judge. And he said, so she'll quit troubling me. I'll just give her what you want. He said, how much the father would move in our behalf. Have you had God move in your behalf lately? That's something. Do you know what's wrong with us? I'll tell you why I say we walk by sight. You have a problem. You head down to the bank and borrow the money. You have a problem. The first thing you do is call somebody up the phone and tell them about it. Have you gone to prayer about it first? 
Have you really trusted God about it first? It's always been that way. Even in the days of Christ, the woman with the issue of blood spent all she had at many doctors and didn't get any help. She came to Christ as the last resort. Isn't it sad that we let Christ be our last resort? Wouldn't it be far better if we let him be the first? That's where he wants to be. Can you see Father Abraham taking little Isaac up the mountain? I can see something there that I never saw before. They say goodbye to the mother. They take these few servants along and up they come until now it's time for Abraham to take the lad by himself. His faith is working. He said, we'll see you. He didn't say, I'll see you. Not in the least. He did not make it singular. He realized he was bringing Isaac back with him. Right there when he said goodbye. Go back and read it. And this same chapter tells us, although he thought that he would have to slay Isaac, he trusted God to resurrect him from the dead. What did he say on the way up? He said, God will provide himself a sacrifice. Where? Up on the top of the mountain? Up there on the barren country, God was going to provide. God took him to the very brink before he stepped in. The knife was already raised. In one second, it would have plunged down into that boy and taken his life. When God at the very last second intervened and stopped it. God takes us sometimes to the last brink. But God don't take an hour to do things and five minutes to do things. In the very last split second, God can get it done. When faith reaches out and moves God, God heard Abraham tell his servants, we'll be back. God heard Abraham say to his son, God will provide. How about you, friend? Does your faith please God? I want to tell you something. You say, I gave a thousand dollars to the camp at Anderson. But if you had ten thousand left, there really wasn't much faith in giving the thousand you did. Did you hear me? You see, the woman that put in her little might, gave everything. The Bible said she gave all her living. There was no place now for her to buy bread. There was nothing for her to do anything about. Everything she had went in there. Then her faith brought the answers. So many times we are working on our reserves. Wasn't that the warning of the last day, my friend? He said, lest we be caught up with the cares of life and surfeiting and the word surfeiting there means an abundance of this world's goods and he said lay not up treasures for the last days in the book of James but then he also talked in the last days when the son of man returned will he find faith on the earth now quickly I'm closing I'm not keeping you long give you a little rest before dinner there are three acts of faith in this chapter, quickly. Noah built the ark by faith. The second act, Sarah had a son through faith. But I want you to notice it's only recorded one time, while the other acts many times. In verse 13, these all died in faith. And there's sometimes we do things by faith. There's sometimes we do things through faith. But when we come to the end of the road, we must be in faith to make it into the kingdom. One means that we use faith as a channel. The other means as an assistance. But the word in means that faith is all around us, surrounding us. When you're slipping away from this world and your eyes are getting dim, and the lights begin to get blurry and the faces of your loved ones no longer you can see if that be the way you go out. The faith that you have in God 
begins to put a wall around you and give you a buoyancy that will take you through this last big barrier, give you the victory over this last enemy, and plant you safely in the arms of the God that you've trusted for all eternity. It will take you from the earth into the heavens, from time into eternity, with the blessing and hope of assurance that although you've never gone to the city and you've never seen God, that it's out there on the other side. And when you say goodbye here, it's waiting for you up there. I wrote a song a number of years ago. Don't sing it much. I said the men's going to the moon by spaceships and so forth, and soon they'll go to Mars. And I ended up in the last verse that says, but when Jesus comes to take us home, we'll find out that they really haven't gone so high for we'll shout the victory as we pass them all by. That's faith, friend. Faith in God. The Bible said, and we overcome the world even by our faith. Amen. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Do you have faith? Shall we stand? Praise the shake hand with other be dismissed, come back to the circle.